remembers where we are with Homestuck. We just finished Act 1 last time. Um, yeah, there was this meteor coming at us, and we kind of had a stare down with it, and it ended in an explosion, so I, I am curious to see what happens. So, here we are. Years in the future, but not many. Whoa! Holy cow! So we're in the middle of a desert? Is that like a ruined landscape off in the distance? Like, is this post-apocalyptic, like, wherever it is? Like, I do see a cityscape off in the distance, but it looks rather dilapidated. So, like, did... Did that game just, like, wipe out everyone? Okay, alright. Uh, and and for those of you who are new to the stream, like, please do not confirm if I speculate. Like, please don't confirm whether or not I'm right or wrong, because, uh, no sp I want to not be spoiled. Um, but I do sometimes stop and, like, kind of speculate a little bit about what's going on. I'm usually wrong, and usually my ideas are way off base, but please don't tell me one way or the other. Oh, you're, you're fine, Jelly Possum. You, and, like, I'm just, I'm just saying that now, like, before we get going here, just, just, just in case, but you're totally, you're totally fine. All right. Anyway. A wayward vagabond records a stuttering step in the sun-bleached dust. Oh, goodness. Is this kind of like a side story? So this person, like, wrapped up in claws is, like, wandering through the desert. Is that kind of like some kind of flying saucer thing that they found? Ooh, what is this? It looks pretty. Interesting. Okay, let's go to Act 2. Suburb Beta. Oh! Walkthroughs. Chaos Demon, Winnie the Poop 2, Sanctuary Remix. Tentacle Therapist! Hey, that's one of our friends! Let's see. Suburb beta walkthrough. Table of contents. One caveats and condolences, two walkthrough incomplete. Caveats and condolences. I'd be inclined to dispense with the trite even uh, with the trite even under less pressing circumstances. Needless to say, I'll forgo the inscrutable ASCII banner, which typically heralds the striking freefall of these documents. I'll also resist the urge to brandish any copyright marks or the particular neurosis that concerns itself with the theft of the utterly mundane. I'll allow other deranged prospectors to stake claims on their worthless plots as the woods burn around them. My introduction will be sparse. There will be no majestic prose blustering into the sails of a galleon <laughs> as we embark on this voyage together. I don't know. This, this prose seems rather majestic and blustering, but... Okay, um, nor will there be any ham-fisted prose whipping its limbs under a bedsheet like a retarded ghost for that matter. I won't set the stage or dim the lights. The mood you will see will be set soon enough. Since you are reading this, chances are you have installed this game on your computer already. If this is true, like many others, you have just participated in bringing about the end of the world. Oh god. So they brought about the end of the world just by playing this game. Oh <laughs> my, just by playing Suburb. But how? Like, how does that all work? I'm curious to know. Like, like, everybody played this game, and somehow each instance of the game summoned, like, this meteor to crash down on their house. And when we saw the end of Act 1, there were lots of them crashing down. But, like, how did that work? I hope that gets exp I hope that gets explained, but I can I can accept it for now that it's a thing that happened. All right, the, but don't beat your, the, but don't beat yourself up about it. There was never anything you could have done to prevent it. The end is happening right now as I type and as you read. I have come to understand that we were always doomed through our collective ignorance, and now further doomed by these by those few who know and struggle who know and struggle to flee. If you're lucky, you'll be among the smaller subset of the latter who are successful. What I mean is, while that game you installed is just one more grinding slab of rock sealing our planet's crypt, it is also your only hope to live. I'm presently faced with the same conundrum as you. 
and though I speak with more experience, my own outcome is far from assured. I will quote-unquote play the game, as much of it as there is to play, and record my findings here. If you want to live, you will do as I instruct. My condolences, TT. Oh, okay, the next... Next, uh, scene has sound, so let me pause the music here for a sec. Can you guys hear the bat? Can you guys hear the background music, by the way? Because, like, I can't really hear it very well on my end, but that might just be in my sound settings. Alright, cool. Click to enable Adobe Flash Player. Yeah, let's run Flash. There we go. Oh, so what's going on here? Oh, so is this what happened at the end of Act 1? It's the house. There's our room. Oh, things going dark outside. What is that underneath the bed? What were those eyes? Oh, there's Dad. Oh my gosh, more eyes. Okay, so... So we took a bite of the apple. And holy cow. What? Hey, fish. <laughs> You're currently boiling in your own home? Yeah, I actually turned on the AC in my home. Ugh. Now let me shift around. So, so we bit the apple and now We've turned dark, the world around us is dark, and our home and dad's car and that tree out in the yard, they're all fine, but there is nothing else, nothing else surrounding us. Nothing but pure abyss. Huh. Whoops, that's, that's the wrong tab. My bad. Okay. The Colonel divides. The two halves go their separate ways, leaving behind the sprite portion. Oh, so did we, did we like, so by... <laughs> yeah, Abyss and Clouds, definitely, Jelly Blossom. So like, by eating the, taking a bite of the apple, did we evolve the, uh... Wasn't it like originally a glowing orb and we like merged it with the jester and like evolved it once, but then it had to be evolved again? So I wonder if that's what happened. I don't know. I imagine things will be explained. Boy. What is left of the sprite undergoes a mysterious transformation. For a moment, you thought you heard someone say boy as if whispered in the periphery of your awareness. It, is, it was probably just your imagination, though. Alright, hang on. So there's sound for this next one. Oh, by the way, thanks for the host, Seth. I didn't say thank you earlier. There you go. You there, boy? <laughs> Click this. To walk around, use the mouse, arrow keys, or WASD keys. Click on various objects to open command menus for them. Outstanding flash program by Alexis Gankro Bing B Bing Bingesner. I'm sorry, I don't know how to how to think. Oh my gosh! Oh, I can actually move around now. Oh, this is cool. Hey, Vince! What's up, man? It has been a long time. How have you been? How have you been, sir? How is life? This is cool. Um, what can I, what can I click on? Peek over the railing. Let's peek over the railing. Getting close to the railing makes you a little nervous. It's a long way down. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Um, ooh. What else can I click on? This large platform, good grief, what is it? 
Wait, I can't see what it says. This large platform. Good grief, what is it? Bo the the alk the alchemeter created the apple or the tree that sprout that sprouted it rather right on time to save you from destruction you're not sure if you can say the same for your neighborhood though you wonder what happened to your dad i'm ron burgundy i've also been well vince life life is good i've been very busy um but things have been good um i went to visit dave and ralph last weekend and that was that was pretty awesome Can I click on the gesture? What's that? It looks different now. After you bit that apple, your whole house seemed to be transported somewhere. Then the apple disappeared and the kernel sprite underwent a transformation. Aside from the change in appearance, the transformation doesn't seem to have any relevant ramifications. Well, okay then. Can I click on this door? Boy, open this door and walk through it. Oh man, so this is cool. So we're gonna be spending a bit of time on this panel, I'm I'm guessing. The Harlequin painting? You have the sentiment in common with John then, I suppose. Ooh, can I open this door? Boy, go in here. Ooh, can we get on the computer? Investigate this device. John, are you there? It seems you are still connected to the internet. Rose is trying to get in touch with you. You will reply in a moment once you have fully assessed your situation. So hang on. Oh, Boston to Columbus? Um, well, I live in Chicago. So I didn't go there from Boston. Although I was in Boston a couple weeks ago. So, so I, so I was there recently. Uh, but yeah, Boston to Columbus would be a long way. Um, Chicago to Columbus, it was still like a six-hour drive, so. And, uh, especially, uh, I took Tara with me, too, so I had to, <laughs> had to take consideration for the dog in the car. Oh, very cool, Fish. Are you gonna get, like, a super cool beefed-up gaming PC? Because that's awesome. I want a super cool beefed-up gaming PC. Who am I going to call? I am going to call the Breakers of Spectres. Yes. <laughs> most Custers. I'll call them most Custers, but not all of them. So, so hang on. How, how, if we're like, if we've been like transported to like, I don't know, some other dimension or something, or like, if, if the end of the world is happening, how do we still have internet? Like... What kind of internet service holds up that well? And how can I get it for myself? Because I would love to have that internet service that's that reliable. Is it like, I don't know, do they have like Google Fiber or something? Because that would be, that would be amazing. <laughs> it's a mystery! Ooh! Oh, VR? That's awesome. <laughs> Maybe it is wind power. Maybe the internet in this dimension is powered by like... A million hamsters running on hamster wheels attached to a thing that harnesses the power of hamster wheels. Just looking at the cover cracks you up. What a great book. Harry Anderson is your hero, and Mike Caveney's glowing treatment of the man does him every bit of justice. You'll have to give this another read soon. <clears throat> I'm just delighted that I can walk around and point and click at things. The punch card seemed to have seemed to contain the instructions for carving a totem of a certain shape. You guess maybe the other punch cards will be will produce different shapes? It bears further exploration. What else can I click on? Wait, wait, Seth, some somebody someone actually tried to do like a hundred percent speedrun of 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 Homestuck? Like seriously? <laughs> yeah, I I don't know if that's possible either, Fish. Yes, especially if you enjoy sanity. The punch card. Oh, I already read this. I already read this. Fiddlesticks. 
Oh no, Vince! I haven't I haven't picked up Bioshock in a long time. I need to go back and get that. Although I will be picking Suikoden back up soon because I got a uh, I got a used PS3 when I was down in Columbus visiting Dave and Ralph, and I just got the digital copy of Suikoden and Suikoden 2. So that solves my disc problem. Yay! Just circumvent the disc altogether. The bunny is not in the box. I said, the bunny is not in the box. Why couldn't the bunny be in the box? That, that's a great question. Why? Why couldn't the bunny be in the box? Why? My god. All I wanted was a bunny. Let's look through the window. Well, that seems delightful. At least your tire swing remains unmolested. A tree without a tire swing is like... Like a house without a surrounding neighborhood, you guess. <laughs> oh, good heavens. What else can I... What else can I point at? Oh, just that. Okay. Oh, can I look at my posters? Armed foes of the deceased. Most people say the second one was not as great as his first, but you feel just the opposite. It was really cool and sort of gross how they hosed each other down with slime that made people angry. Oh, yes. Oh, the Ghostbusters movies? I mean, 2 was okay. I liked the first better. I really liked the new one, actually. Um, TG refers to this film as Nasty Man Bro Bukake Theater, whatever the hell that means. Oh, God. That's kind of true. It's kind of true. Hey, Blitzy! You encountered me and you absconded. Well done. Um, oh, Vince, Tara is a year old now. She is a, she's a year old. By the way, if you enjoy cute puppy pictures and videos, follow my puppy on Instagram. <laughs> okay. Um, is there anything else I can... This door, explain this. Rose sure did a number on your house, but you guess she did manage to save your life. You guess! All right, let's, uh... Oh, what else can I explore? Can I explore the CD rack? Tara, where are you going, girl? <laughs> what? Inspect this ghastly man and his boy. Fred Savage has a punchable, pace, punchable face, your ass. More like a talented young actor's face who you would who you would want to hang out with if you got the chance, and also if he were not a fully grown man now. Anyway, the thought of monsters looking in your house scares the shit out of you, which is why this movie is so awesome. But the fact that those monsters could also be your best friend is what makes it doubly awesome. <laughs> oh no, buffering? Am I dropping... Well, I'm not dropping any frames on my end, so... Sorry about the buffering. All right, let's, uh, oh, let's click that. Let's go, oh, we can leave, right? Go out the door. Where else can we go? Can we go up these stairs? Oh, can we go to this door? Oh, that's where I came from, okay, gotcha. Um, can I go this way? What is down here? Proceed. Ooh, what's this poster? I am not fond of this smug fellow. The man, the myth, the legend. What do you have up your sleeve there, Anderson? Look at that poker face. He's not telling a soul. What do we got here? Go in there now. Oh, good heavens. What's, uh... Oh, it's the bathroom. Your plumbing appears faulty. Man, Rose did such a piss-poor job of fixing the bathroom, it would almost certainly be a mistake to try to use the toilet. You guess you could just pee over the edge of the cliff. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, same thing. Okay. But seriously, though, Rose did do not a great job of putting the bathroom back together. Alright, well, let's leave the bathroom. <laughs> Leave at once. Open this. Your dad's room is still locked. Aw, oh, dad. All I want to do is break into your room and rummage through your things. Oh, hello. What's this picture? 
No, 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 keep moving. Nope, I'm gonna check it out. Believe me, you have no intention of turning your head to observe this dreadful thing. Uh, okay, fine. Ooh, what's this on the ground? What is the meaning of this rubbish? <laughs> okay, even you have to admit, this one's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, maybe, Jen, maybe, maybe, maybe the lesson that we should all take away from the sudden end of the world is that maybe John should have been a little more self-sufficient instead of relying on others for help. I think that's the lesson we can all take away from this. Ugh. 13 years old. Exactly, like... Well, Jelly, I mean, 13 years old is... It's quite a... Quite a mature age. You know, if you're a dog. I mean, you would be old and sage by then. A small dessert tray? Useless. <laughs> In retrospect, it was pretty funny when your dad pied you like that. And <laughs> got it again by the old man. Oh, dad. You pied us. Use this to reseal that opening there. If only putting the lid back on the Cruxtruder would undo all it's done. Alas, Pandora's tube has been opened. Yep, that is, that is accurate. Move this absurd edifice and exit your house. <laughs> This thing weighs a ton! You'd honestly be surprised if the game cursor could lift it, at least not without a significant expense of grist. Of all the places for Rose to drop the infernal thing, more than ever you feel, what's the word you're looking for? Of course, house trapped. <laughs> house trapped, you see. I feel like, I feel like that's definitely not any reference to anything here. Oh, so, so Vince, it's not exactly a game, it's actually, it's a webcomic. It's actually, like, one of the longest webcomics ever made. Um, but, um, there are also elements of interactivity with it, um, like there's music and stuff. Uh, but basically it's just kind of, uh, it's like a webcomic and, it's like, slash interactive story, I'm guessing. Um, my, yeah, my understanding... Yeah, that's that's what I've been told, Jelly. My understanding is that um, you know, Homestuck. As you go through Homestuck, it gets more complex. Uh, the plot gets more complicated, and clearly, like the the level of production <laughs> and interaction has increased already, because uh, none of this happened in Act One. Destroy these diminutive soldiers of merriment. <laughs> it hardly seems worth it to, worth worth it to go to the bother. You doubt you could get much for them at a garage sale, even. Maybe a grubby palm of pennies and a kick in the nuts for the whole lot of them? <laughs> oh my goodness. Man, one... One person. I cannot believe that, like, one person, like, did the art for this. Like, all of it. I mean, clearly... Clearly the author of this had help with the the flash programming for this one because somebody was credited for it but topple this urn immediately that would be disrespectful to your nana you won't you just won't do it or not intentionally at least you consider that it is fortunate she is no longer around to witness the sorrow on the other hand you would probably benefit from her elderly wisdom now <laughs> oh my what else can we look at this picture Vile. Pay no mind to this filth. <laughs> I love the writing in this game. <laughs> slash story, slash webcomic. I can't believe I just called it a game. But right now it feels like a game, because I'm moving around and pointing and clicking on things. What is he even doing there? Playing with a ball or something? Clowns are stupid. Yep. Yes, and music. Inc exactly, yeah. Yeah, Blitz. Yeah, uh, Toby Fox had... Pretty, had a pretty solid hand in this, too. And that's part of why I'm playing this, because, like, I played Undertale a lot. I've just finished Mother 3. It just seems appropriate to do Homestuck. This way, through the door, through the doors like you see in a cowboy saloon. Ooh, what's going on in here? It's a mess. Where's Dad? Dad was in here. Is Dad around? I don't see Dad anywhere. What's going on? 
Sample powdered uncooked dessert. Back, ye miserable wench! Stay thy choking airborne particulates of temptation! Well then, I guess we can't eat the cake mix then. This book is too big for a young, stupid boy. <laughs> Colonel Sassikers is your favorite book, almost as favorite as Wise Guy. They are both your favoritest of all time. Um, let's see. Oh, there's this bowl on the floor. Peek in bowl of goo. Wherever your dad went, he seems to have left in a hurry. For all his absurdities you have put up with, you sure wish he were here right now. Yeah, Jelly, was it, uh, I know that Megalovania is in, is in Homestuck, but is also in, uh, in Undertale. I actually like the, the Undertale version the best. I've listened to, like, all three versions of it. ba da dum bum 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 ba Examine this artwork. What is this? Some kind of bloodthirsty pickle? Your dad was so proud when you drew this, he hung it up immediately and it stayed there ever since. That was one week ago. <laughs> oh my. Oh, this is delightful. I am delighted. I am so glad that I'm reading this. Oh, let's see. What's in here? Plunder chest. Would you like to play a game? That's such a War Games reference. Are, is there anything else? Nope, just that. Oh, sorry, Blitzy. I'm sorry you're having trouble. Open this door now! Oh, so now we're in the laundry room, eh? This is no time for laundry. You're right. Thank you for being sensible about it. <laughs> Open these and rifle through them for goods. You don't give a shit about what's in there. Probably nothing you'd be inclined to use now, anyway. <laughs> okay. Exit, boy. <laughs> hey, we're out in the backyard. How much backyard is there? Probably not much. Where's the edge? There's the edge. Can we peek over the edge? I don't think we can peek over the edge. Okay. Whoa, what's this up here? Claim the dangling tree bobble! <laughs> the trick handcuffs are still here, thank god! And no, you're not about to try to claim them just now. Oh, but I want to claim them! Oh no, don't punish Blitzy's Wi-Fi. It'll just make it angrier. Alright, well there's more more cliff and abyss over here. <clears throat> there's definitely, be, definitely been a sharp increase in abyss in this neighborhood. Ponder lawn amusement. <laughs> Your childhood nemesis, the spring-mounted pogo ride, sadly was not swallowed by the void. It will have to wait another day for its comeuppance. <laughs> Damn you, springy pogo thing! One of these days, I'll have my revenge. Yeah, so do I, Vince. It's like... It's like deliberately bad and charming in its own way. I mean, Undertale is kind of the same way, too, in terms of that kind of art style. And, like, it just, like, it just works really well. I don't know why I like it, but I do. Looks like your swing set is toast. You relive fond memories in a moment of sorrow. Oh, not our childhood swing set. Oh, look. Electricity. Should we touch it? Fiddle with the right, fiddle with the bright sparkly thing. That sounds incredibly dangerous. John sensibly disregards your awful advice. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, I have the feeling that this is about all we are able to explore. So I don't think there's anywhere else to go except back into the house. So 
So I think it's time we go with boy quit all the scurrying around. Click on the power box. Hang on. I thought the power box would give me the same thing. Admire this wall mounted gadget. Through some mysterious force, your house still seems to be powered, even though the wires are severed. Quite bizarre. Yeah, that's true. The house is powered, the electricity's out, we still have internet. What is happening? Alright. Boy, quit all this scurrying around. For the last time, this boy's name is John. Fine, John. Return to your quarters. Whoops, sorry. Let me close that tab, actually. Let's get the music back on. Alright. Alright, we're back in our quarters now. Well that was fun. That was like a really that was like a really fun part of that. <clears throat> you go back up to your bedroom, tiptoeing around this weird petroleum-based sludge. Yeah, what's with the petroleum-based sludge? Now John, respond to your friend unit. Let's take a look for the festival log. John? Are you there? Hey, yeah, I'm here. And not dead, I think. I know. I've been watching you scramble through the house like a lunatic. You should have answered me sooner. Oh, man, sorry. I was looking around for my dad, and I can't find him anywhere. Have you seen him? No, I'm sure he'll turn up. We have more important things to address right now. Yeah, like, where am I? I don't know that either, but I've determined your neighborhood was destroyed by the meteor. Wherever you were transported, it saved you from the impact. I've been reading reports in the news. Over the last few days, there have been many smaller meteor collisions with people's homes around the world. And they seem to be getting bigger. Yours was the biggest they've identified so far. Wow, okay. So then I guess if this is all the game's, this is all the game's doing, then the point is for us to save the world? Perhaps. Then we better get moving and figure this game out. Yes, but wait. We should retrieve your PDA yet again. It will help to keep tabs on each other while you investigate. I think I can get you closer to it if I can replenish our grist supply somewhat. There may be a way to recycle s some that we already used. Okay, I'll meet you out on the balcony. Wait, Rose, one thing. What? You never even wished me a happy birthday! <laughs> Oh my god, he's in the middle of the end of the world, and he's like, You never wish me a happy birthday, Rose. I mean, jeez. Like, honestly, what kind of what kind of friend, what kind of friend does not wish their friend a happy birthday during the apocalypse? I ask you. I, I'm beginning to question whether Rose is truly John's friend. Like, I'm having, I'm having my doubts. <laughs> anyway. Um, hello? <laughs> I was working on something to send you, but I was running late with it. I didn't want you to think I believed meager well wishes alone would suffice for the occasion. That said, happy birthday, John. <laughs> oh, jeez, that is silly. Anyway, thanks. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, tentacle therapist. Like, I love, like, when they... When we, saw, when we saw Rose for the first time in Act 1, like, I loved, like, all the Cthulhu stuff in her room. That was, like... Super cool. All right. First, take the fabric item on the floor over there. Yay! Got a fabric item for our capture log deck. <laughs> the towel? Why? Oh well, you're the boss. You capture log the towel. What and how? Do as the purple text says. To the balcony! <laughs> All right. To the balcony we go. John makes his way to the balcony per your awkwardly worded request. Wait, take that, the blue wobbly thing. Oh right, the thing on the alchemeter. You whimsically decide to capture log the totem which was used to create the apple tree earlier. John, recycle the grist as was dictated by your cohort. <laughs> I'm loving all the commands here. <laughs> John cannot do anything with the grist as of this moment. That is up to the suburb player. I see. <laughs> Question mark? Oh, okay. We just did a thing. Yes, that will suffice. Rose deletes the perfectly generic objects. Six units of build grist are restored to your grist cache. Yay! Alright. 
Rose expends the grist to drag a new plank from the balcony in the direction of the PDA. John, <laughs> John, run across precarious platform swiftly. Oh God. Oh goodness, I see what's happening. John isn't sure about that. It's a long way down. Boy, I said make haste on the narrow catwalk. <laughs> hey, thanks for the host, Dave. Oh, he's refusing. John is very nervous about the idea, and the strident tone of your commands is starting to make him a little upset. Fine, proceed as your level of comfort dictates. <laughs> oh my goodness. There he goes. You cautiously walk within range of the PDA. Rose retrieves it. Now take it. Oh, I see, Blitzy. It did kind of a Celebrity Jeopardy Saturday Night Live thing there. Alright, so we capture log the PDA. You grab the PDA, launching one of the Harley configures into the night. You kiss. You can kiss that one goodbye. So long, Harley Quinn figure. <laughs> Off into the cloudy abyss with you. <laughs> oh, is that how you read the name the first time, Jelly? Oh, that's that's hilarious. I definitely read it as therapist. Just one arrow command will suffice. Thanks. Ooh, serious business. I'm look. I'm like looking closely at this. The following matters have been submitted in a frank and forthright manner for. For Pipe Fan 413's judicious appraisal. Thank you, all report. Most hats removed from danger. Ties next. <laughs> Fedora Freak, you are in our thoughts, along with Pipe Fan 413 and his enviable collection of pipes. <laughs> Good luck, Fedora Freak. Salvage as many hats as is practical. <laughs> Neighboring house struck by flaming projectile. In light of the in light of fire hazard, evacuating house of all expensive garments. At PipeFam413, status of health slash wardrobe. <laughs> Submitting inquiry of concern over cataclysmic event. PipeFam413, reply. Oh, goodness. Oh, my goodness. It looks like you're not the only one trying to locate your father after the disaster. These boring men are uninteresting. <laughs> Let's open up Pester Chum instead. John, are you okay? You seem a bit tentative. I'm fine, I guess. Since I got here, I feel compelled to do these weird things I don't really want to do. By some kind of voice that I can't really even hear. I don't know. It is kind of hard. It is, it is hard, ah, it is hard to explain. Perhaps the early symptoms of an anxiety disorder, like post-traumatic stress? Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Well, if you can pull yourself together, there are a few more things we should try. Like, prototyping the kernel sprite again, if possible. We should hurry. My laptop battery won't last forever. Okay, I'll go back inside. No, don't do that. Hop off this ledge to that onto that car. Oh, gosh. <laughs> what? No, that sounds incredibly dangerous. <laughs> arrow, 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 arrow. Well, now you're just being a pest. Which turnip truck did you just stumble out of anyway? Who are you? Years in the future, but not many. Oh, so this is cutting back to that first part of the story. Oh, so that that person wandering the desert found a hatch. Okay. An unsealed tunnel welcomes hot desert air into its stagnant depths. Ooh, okay. So this is kind of like a flash forward. This is pretty cool. Anyway, how are you guys doing? I'm like so curious about what's happening right now. And I'm, cur I'm curious about this years in the future but not too many storyline that's starting to develop now. Wait, what's what's this thing right here? This isn't like the grist this isn't like a grist cache, is it? Like it's low on something. Maybe I'm just not remembering that correctly. Also, who is this person? 
Who are you, mummy rap one eye? What? Why is this person watching us? How is this person watching us? What is going on? Wait, so like, is this person... Watching us from the future? Or are we like being recorded in present day and like this is just being played? I... I am curious. <clears throat> Things are transpiring. Boy. Oh my gosh, is this like, is this person like playing? The game? Oh, this person is like trying to communicate? What is going on? What are you doing, Wayward Vagabond? What's your game? What's your ankle? Wayward Vagabond is his name. That's right. I forgot at the start of at the start of Act Two, it was you. The person was identified as a Wayward Vagabond. All right. Game facts. Wait, is the Wayward Vagabond reading the game fact and playing along? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. An examination of the basics. Upon connecting with the client user, you, the server user, will be met with a control panel allowing you to manipulate your co-player's environment. You will find that you are allowed to deploy four items at no expense. Three of these are rather large machines and one is a punch card. It's quite possible that you have already deployed some of these items before reading this. If this is the case and you have activated the machine called the Cruxtruder, such that it displays a countdown, you must proceed to section A100 of this walkthrough immediately. The life of the client user depends on it. And if your co-player has activated this device in your environment too, then yours does as well. But if not, please refrain from doing anything with the Cruxtruder, aside from merely deploying it. This will buy us some time to think things through properly, and to go over the basics of this game before you find your soft, easily punctured head in the jaws of the lion. <clears throat> oh my goodness. As mentioned, there are four items to consider, each playing a role in a process which appears to have a singular purpose, to manufacture objects out of thin air. The designers of the game, judging by the language used, regard this process as a sort of alchemy. This may allude to complexities in the production process yet to present themselves, but for now, the variety of objects you are able to create remains quite limited. The items in question are the Crux Truder, again, tread lightly with this one, the Totem Lathe, the Alchemeter, and the Pre-Punched Card. I will describe how these devices work in conjunction with each other, and I will use the analogy of having a key made at a hardware store to help you understand. First, deploy all of the objects in convenient proximity to each other. Be sure not to block doors or pathways with them. You can always revise the dimensions of the rooms to make space for them, but I'd advise against this, or even experimenting with the function. Doing so comes at the expense of build grist, a commodity which appears to be at a premium at the, at the onset, and one you'd best be advised to save for later. <clears throat> Right, the crux shooter. Removing the lid signals the moment your life becomes a great whirling batshit pandemonium. Someone resembling the chaos of an especially ethnic wedding. <laughs> oh my gosh. Somewhere a soused uncle deliberately shatters china on the floor. Muddy livestock is decorated and then lost track of. The question, whose mule is this, at times can be heard over the din. <laughs> this is now your reality. <laughs> that is delightful. Hey, Harper! What's up, man? How you doing? It's good to see you again. I am doing well, and uh, we are solidly into Act 2 now. I got to move around and stuff, and it was super fun. Um, let's see. But aside from that, it marks the beginning of the process I'm about to describe. The countdown begins, yes. Also, an entity called the Colonel Sprite is released. But neither of these things are all that relevant to this process, to my knowledge. More on these things later. What is relevant is the unlidded Cruxtruder's ability to dispense Cruxite dowels. It will dispense at least one, though I suspect it is capable of producing more given parameters I'm not yet familiar with. In my keymaking analogy, these dowels represent the uncarved pieces of metal which the hardware store employee retrieves from a drawer or a rack, and sets about carving into a key. The two following items are needed to do the carving. The pre-punched card. It is a simple Silidex card containing an item. 
there is evidence to suggest the specific item it contains is variable from session to session. The card I deployed contained a blue apple. Yours may be different. It shouldn't matter, hopefully. Additionally, the card, as you may guess, is punched, like one used with antique computing systems. The pattern of holes comprises data, which I believe corresponds to the instructions for creating the item which the card contains. That it is pre-punched uh, suggests there's a way to punch an unpunched card, possibly imprinting it with the data for the item it contains, though no mechanism for this has presented itself yet. But the data on the card cannot be used to, recreate, to create the item directly. There is a middleman. That middleman is the totem lathe. Oh, still buffering, Dragon? I'm sorry. <laughs> You're about to go to bed, but decided to watch this. <laughs> it's almost 3 a.m. over there. Well, I, I, if you decide to go to bed, Harper, I will fully support that decision. <laughs> like, don't, don't make yourself stay up any later than you have to on my account. No, but if you're able to sleep in tomorrow because it's Saturday, then that's also cool. Hey, Matrim, how's it going? Yeah, I'm on. I'm on. Uh, I just started Act Two, so you are ahead of me. So, um, so you'll probably not be, not be, not have any spoilers. All right. Uh, where were we? The totem lane. This is essentially the key carving machine. It will carve into your Cruxite dowel a pattern of grooves and contours, uh, the sort which makes a key unique. The instructions for this pattern are supplied by the punch card, which is inserted into the lathe pre-activation to configure its chisels. Once the dowel is carved, you have a totem serving as your key, which can then be used to unlock the card item through the alchemeter. But at this point, I will diverge from my keymaking analogy and switch to a barcode analogy, which is not a terribly strenuous leap to make, since the concepts of a key and a barcode are essentially the same. One being a unique pattern of grooves, the other of varying black lines. The Alchemeter. If you place a Cruxite dowel, carved or uncarved, on the Alchemeter's small pedestal, its robotic arm will scan the contours with a laser, hence the barcode analogy. This is the machine's way of reading the data originally imprinted from the card and transforming that data onto a physical object, or into a physical object. Though typically this is not done without expense, I believe in... Uh, ah, sorry, wrong inflection there. Uh, though typically this is not done without expense, I believe... Oh, I did it again. Though typically this is not done without expense, I believe. An uncarved dowel results in the creation of a perfectly generic object, which is a seemingly useless green cube. It costs two units of build grist to make, and I do not advise you to waste resources on it. There appears to be many other varieties of grist, ostensibly used in combinations to create different sorts of items, which possibly offers some insight into the game's use of the term alchemy. But quite conveniently, there is an exception to this. Creating the item on the pre-punched card costs nothing. This is good because creating this item turns out to be essential. Now that you know this, you can in your own time begin the process. Once you initiate it, naturally there is no going back, so best to be prepared. But you probably shouldn't drag your feet too long. As I mentioned earlier, this is your only means of escape. When you're ready, be prepared to follow the steps in the next section swiftly. So your crux truder is ticking. Do this to live. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Thanks, Harper. Yeah, sorry, I'm just just catching up to chat here real quick. So I just read through all that. Hey Jamma, how's it going? Hello, good morning. And also good night when you go to bed. <laughs> oh my goodness. Blitzy, I'm so sorry you're having Well, you probably can't hear me. I'm so sorry you're having internet troubles. Let me type that. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by, Jamma. <laughs> Have a good night. Get some sleep. Oh man. Yeah, right, Matrim. Like, if only, if only this uh, this game fact had existed before before he before John opened the crux shooter. But alas, in the lack. So also, I just love. Can I just say, I just love. Um, I just love Rose's writing style. Like, she's just so. It's just so intelligent and. And just pretentious, but in a delightful, endearing way to me. I think it's very charming. The writing of this is just very charming. I'm really pleased. I'm really pleased. Anyway. Um. 
Yeah. Yeah, Harper, maybe it'll take me like a year and a half to two years to finish this, but I'm I'm enjoying this. Like, this is great. Okay. Alright. Oh, hey! It's Rose! Speaking of Rose. So Rose is standing in the observatory, watching like this meteor shower, raining hellfire down. In the distance, meteorites fall with greater frequency. The fire in the forest burns so hot, not even the rain is putting it out. Check the status of your battery, Rose. Oh dear, it's looking pretty low. Your laptop battery is alright for now, but it won't be for long. If the power in the house doesn't come back on, you can think of one last resort. The small backup generator stored behind the mausoleum. <laughs> Prototype sprite with Betty Crocker box? What? Why are we prototyping this fight with the Betty Crocker box? Why is that happening? Hey, Matrim, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the Brenomaniacs. Huzzah! Thank you so much. Fur de Fala. Oh, hang on. Oh, what is my zodiac sign? I am a Gemini. Is there a... So is there a Homestuck-related reason for... For asking my Gemini sign? Because... Um, at least one other person who I know is a Homestuck fan asked me the same thing. Okay. Hey, Rolite! Good to see you. Happy Friday. Uh, Homestuck... Homestuck is delightful. I am... I am delighted with Homestuck. It's a future thing? Okay. Alright. Well, don't tell me. I'm sure I'll find out in due time. But this is... This is great. What? Oh, man. You're gonna use that... That sucks. What a stupid idea. <laughs> I have I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of in some agreement with John a little bit. I mean, I don't know if it's a stupid idea or if it's going to suck, but I don't know if if prototyping the Betty Crocker box with with the Colonel Sprite is the best idea, but well, I guess we'll see what happens. We have to hurry along. I'm running low on battery power. But the cake mix? Oh, that's so dumb. I doubt it matters. We might as well just use any old crap lying around. <laughs> Fine, I guess. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hey, thanks for the thanks for the bits, Matram. Bits, 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 bits. <laughs> I appreciate that. Let's see. Oh my gosh, the Colonel Sprite is dodging. Trying not to get mixed with the Betty Crocker box. The Sprite is playing hard to get. You guess that's what you get for originally prototyping it with something that engenders mischief and pranksterism. Do the potted vegetable instead. It looks delicious. Ah. Pipe down, you. This is Rose's decision, not yours. Rose, prototype sprite with Sassaker text. Oh gosh, the Sassaker text? I, th I don't know if John is going to like having that book merged with the, the Colonel Sprite. Oh yes, sweet! Now we're talking. See if you can distract it. I'll try to sneak up on it. John, flail about in a distracting manner. <laughs> the sprite finds the distracting manner in which you flail about to be rather distracting. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is delightful. The pesky sprite eludes you again! Not even the great colonel himself can outfox it. Oh no! No, Colonel Sassaker! In narrowly missing with your attempt to create the colonel sprite, you drop the massive tome. The entire house rattles under the astonishing girth of the book. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> this is great. In the other room, Nana's ashes dump onto the sprite, which is caught unawares by the dowsing. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh my gosh! <laughs> Oh, I can only imagine what's going to happen. Hey, Digi Dragon! Hey, how's it going? 
Wow. Wow. So, okay, I'm, I'm gonna... I imagine we're gonna see what happens in a moment, but I'm just, I'm just taking this moment to appreciate the humor of... of Nana's ashes, of all things, spilling onto the Colonel Sprite. <laughs> Prototype. So are we gonna get Nana Sprite now? Oh my gosh, are we gonna have, like, our dead Nana come back to life as, like, a jester ghost? and have her, like, advise us? Because that would be awesome. Okay, let's see what happens. You find the sacred urn toppled again. This time you're quite sure it wasn't your fault. The sprite is nowhere to be found. Oh man, I wanted to see. Hey, Digital Wolf! Hey! How's it going? Happy Friday to you. Remove Cruxtruder from doorway. Oh, looks like we need a hundred uh, build grist to do it. Oh man, where'd it go? I can't find it anywhere in the house. No time to worry about it. The next thing we should do is get your server copy of the game from the car. Oh, that's right. We need to get the server copy. I forgot about that. You need to connect to my client so I can repeat your steps and presumably join you wherever you are. We should do this quickly before my house burns down. <laughs> Wait, there's a fire? There will be soon. Oh, jeez. So move this thing already. It looks like it requires a lot of grist to move. I don't have enough to relocate the door either. How much do you have? Zero? <laughs> oh. Hmm. I thought about jumping to the car from the ledge earlier, but that sounds really dangerous. I have a better idea. Meet me upstairs. Do again as purple words say. I hope you're all having a delightful Friday evening because I'm I am delighted with Homestuck right now. You're about to head upstairs, but you thought you heard something behind you. It was faint, but you could swear it was a small, light-hearted chuckle, along with the lines of a spirited hoo hoo hoo. Oh my. Oh my gosh! It is! It is Jester Grandma! <laughs> it is Jester Nana Ghost! <laughs> oh my goodness. Ignore this woman's antics! You're not sure you even saw a woman, let alone any of her hypothetical antics. But whatever it was you may have caught a glimpse of, it sure gave you the willies. You head upstairs on your way to the balcony. Your PDA is acting up again. Indulge the device, but be curt with it. <laughs> be curt with the device. Hey, Blitzy. Um, so, well, first of all, welcome back. I hope your internet's working. Um, so, we just spilled Nana's ashes on the Colonel Sprite, and now the Colonel Sprite is um, Jester Nana Sprite, I think. <laughs> so that's what's happening. Okay. Hey, bro, check it out. I'm working on some new rhymes. Dude, I don't have time for your nerdy raps. Come on, this is this is hells of ill. Just listen. It sounds like you don't even believe me that I was about to get blown up, but I really was, but now I'm in some weird dimension that Suburb sent me to or something. And now I'm on top and now on top of that, I think I'm being haunted by my dead grandma. Huh. For real? Yeah, it's true, but I'll talk to you later about it. I think I could drop some sick rhymes about all this. Man, see, I just don't think all the rapping stuff is really as cool as you think it is. No, this will be dope. Check it. No, I have to go. Bye. Wait, wait. Armageddon's getting waged on us, but I'm getting armed and dangerous. Sending men in space for saving us. See which play is more courageous. Ben or Bruce? Dudes reach a truce. Put their blow, sh put their blow shoots to use and up suck it. Affleck sacri sacrifice? I mean... Sacrifice would have to suffice. Aw, oh, fluck it. <laughs> Bro, be a stained glass saint. Up on a cross getting hella Christ plagiarist. <laughs> Bruce is like off of that crucifix. Enough of this fucking savior, savior fuss. <laughs> My god, this is awful. This is not good. Restrained like his ass per McLean redux while Buscemi remained derangerous. When a plan gone astray pays off a wasted craterus, ashtray catering to layers of Matt McConaughey's vague remainder dust. Wait, uh, McConaughey wasn't even in any of those meteor movies, was he? <laughs> I'll have to make a rap about 
I don't know, Morgan Freeman or something, <laughs> being the president. <laughs> It'll be called, Obama made it so that no one gives a shit about black presidents in movies anymore. <laughs> See, you've got to fill me in on what's going on, so I have something to rap about besides all your dumb shit movies. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh wow. This is fantastic. Enough, enough strange poetry from the red text. <laughs> Oh, what's going on? You head out the you head out to the balcony to find out what Rose has in mind. She is messaging you again. The purple text is less irrational than the than the red text. Oh my. Okay. I'm lifting up I'm lifting the car up to the balcony. Whoa, okay. Once it's up, retrieve the game. Then I'll put it back down in the driveway. But the door is locked. Then break a window. But it's my dad's car! <laughs> It's just a window, and this is sort of an emergency. Otherwise, I promise I'll handle the car with velvet gloves. All right, <laughs> Rose, pick up car. Oh my goodness. Okay, what's happening? Okay, she picked up the car. Connection lost? No! No! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh my god! Oh, that's awful! <laughs> what a terrible time to lose your internet connection. Oh my gosh. Hey, thanks, Matram. Bits, 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 bits. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is that is fantastic. You tell me another yep, No green box. Miss Oh, there goes the car <laughs> into the abyss. <laughs> Ridiculous folly, inexcusable. <laughs> Blitzy can relate to losing your internet connection. You're inclined to agree, but hey, accidents happen. You double check your PDA to make sure if Rose is really gone. Indeed, this seems to be the case. TG is still pestering you, of course, but another chum is now logged in as well. Oh, Garden Gnostic is on. Excellent. Oh yeah, I'm uh, I'm playing uh, for background music. I'm playing uh, the Volume Six album. Air transparent. What color are the words that this chum says? I'm back! Oh, hi. I went to investigate the explosion I heard. Was it by any chance a meteor? Yes! How did you know? Oh, man, it's kind of a long story. Anyway, are you okay? Did it blow up your yard or start a fire or something? No, I'm fine. It landed a pretty good ways from my house, and I went to look at it, and it's pretty big. But Beck doesn't want me to go near it, so I came home. He seems to think he seems to think it's dangerous. Well, gosh, he's probably right. Anyway, what have you been up? To? What have you been up to, John? Oh, did you get my package yet? Uh, yeah, I was trying to get it, but Rose dropped my car into a weird, spooky, bottomless pit. And the package was in the car, and I'm really sorry about that. Oh no! <laughs> wow, okay, I guess I should start at the beginning. See, a meteor blew up my neighborhood. That's terrible, John! I'm so sorry! But I'm okay, and <laughs> my house is my house is too, sort of. That game I was telling you about, Suburb, which I was playing with Rose, sort of transported me somewhere at the last minute. But now I'm trapped here, and it's weird, and dark, and I can't find my dad, and I just lost the car, and my copy of the game, in the pit, and I think I have to save the world from the apocalypse. <laughs> well, it sounds really crazy and kind of scary, but it also sounds kind of exciting. I don't know, John. Maybe this is your destiny. If anyone can, if anyone can save the world, I think it's probably you. Wow, you think so? Yes. <laughs> well, okay, but it's not even that simple. I was about to connect to Rose to help transport her and save her from meteors and fire and stuff, but she lost battery power and I lost the game disc. So I think I have to get TG to use his copy to save her. 
But that jackass won't shut up about and stop rapping and stuff. <laughs> this is, he is so silly. Yeah, anyway, I should talk to him about it, so BRP. <laughs> oh my goodness. Not the bees! Oh goodness, bees? What about bees? I love how love how GG was just like knows nonchalant about the whole John getting stuck in another dimension thing. They weren't be GG wasn't like, what are you talking about? They were just like, oh well, that's awful. <laughs> like I thought that was funny. Okay, all right. <laughs> when the film crew zooms where, <laughs> where the president's at, I'm like, if that dude's black, I'll eat my hat. Turns out he is, so we're all damned. Director's got gumption. Like we'll all flip a, like we'll all flip our shit. He ain't shining shoes or something. It's called free emancipation. If it's not pres election, it's God ascension. And Bruce Almighty, whoops, different Bruce from the one I just mentioned. Ugh! Can't explain to me why this ain't condescension to think how shit a brick. Not even he can convey the intention with his quick-spun wit. <laughs> rather, rather defray all this tension, sit on his laps while he whittles a splint, and some guy eyes what he does and patronizes, guess, negros guess negrosity's the mother of invention. Stop rapping for a second, you horse's ass. I have something important to talk about. What's up? Rose is in trouble and she needs help. I was going to connect to her with Suburb, but I lost my copy. Okay. Also, she lost battery power. If she can get back up and running, she'll need someone with the game to get her out of there before her house burns down. So I think you should use your copy of the game to help her. My copy? That's gonna be tough. Why? I lost it. It's a stupid story and I'd rather not talk about it. Should be embarrassing, yo. I thought you said you had two. Well, yeah, one is my brother's copy. Okay, we'll get his then. All right, but he's not gonna be happy about that. Whatever. Also, you might want to read Rosa's walkthrough to get up to speed on this. Oh, man. What? Nothing, really. Look, all I'm saying is the girl tends to lay it on kind of thick, you know? <laughs> Rolls eyes. Oh, my. Are we still talking about bees? Oh, beesbeesbees.com. I, I should maybe click on that later, but I don't know if I actually should ever click on that. <laughs> Thanks, Matram. Bits, 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 bits. That was an appropriate emote to use, too. Well done. I applaud you. Good use of failfish. <laughs> Alright. Your laptop is out of battery power. There's only one thing left to do. Time to make your way to that backup generator. Knit laptop cozy to shield your laptop from the rain. <laughs> Wow, that was fast. Oh, that would be such a waste of time. Besides, you already knitted one a while ago. Oh, okay. You retrieve it from your knitting bag and apply it to your laptop. You capture log the laptop plus cozy. Now let's equip Grimoire to Strife Specifus. That would be incredibly ill-advised. There are some dark forces you just don't want to mess around with. You understand this better than most. You put the book down. Recapture log your items. <laughs> oh, do you, Jelly? Why? I, I wonder why that is. You envy next Friday for the next... Ho oh, are you just envying Friday because next Friday also gets to have a Homestuck stream? <laughs> you grab the knitting bag and the grimoire in that order. It's always a logistical puzzle with your tree modus. <laughs> yeah, the tree modus confuses me. But I don't understand data structures, so... I bet if I studied them enough, I would. Because I do have a math degree. Uh, the tree auto-balances, leaving the knitting bag accessible in the root card. Allocate knitting needles to strife specifics. <laughs> Rose is delightful. I think Rose is my favorite character so far. Allocate knitting needles to strife specifics. You feel a lot more comfortable with this as a weapon. You're so handy with those needles, you feel like you could probably use them to fillet a swordfish. <laughs> oh my goodness. You lose the root card in the process, severing the tree. Hey, careful with all that stuff. Uh, knit plush cuddle Cthulhu to soothe the nerves. <laughs> I don't know if I have time for that. 
That would also be a preposterous waste of time. Besides, you're quite sure you've never heard of this creature called Cthulhu before. There are, however, many other specimens of the, of the zoologically dubious you're familiar with, such as... Fluthulu, foul patrician of misery. <laughs> to hear his mammoth belly gurgle is to know the epic of joy has come to an abrupt end. <laughs> Fluthulu. <laughs> oh my good heavens. Oh yeah, Matrim, I'm sure that there are other, I mean, there are many other characters I know that we will certainly encounter. Uh, but Rose is my current favorite so far. But uh, no, there's definitely a lot of homestuck ahead of us. And Nerobugleth, shame beast king of Groat's Query, writhe lord of the moist beyond hood. Hearing his melodious chirps and tongue clicks causes one's bones to explode. And of course, there's o there's Oglagoth, the deep one. Whenever he grinds his teeth, all the children of a random galaxy somewhere will frown continuously for a 9,000 year span. He is the first and smallest of the smaller gods, appointed in servitude of a vile, unfathomable pantheon of middling gods, which caters to the whims of the noble circle of horror terrors. An omniscient, omnipotent order of the elite few, forever cloaked in the darkness of the furthest ring. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> this is over the top and preposterous and I love it. And then there's a strange page containing some rather mysterious notes on summoning procedures. You've never been quite sure what these diagrams are getting at. Oh god. <laughs> Why would you want to summon any of these? Wait, 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 wait. Let me go back and look at look at that for a sec. Why is there... So wait, these are summoning procedures? Like, now that I look more closely at this, this is like... There's like a diagram for a window, and... Uh, plugging an electrical cord into an outlet, and another diagram for a window... What does... What does... What do these windows... What... What does that have to do with summoning, like, at all? <laughs> what? <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. This looks like an Ikea manual. I mean, I've never purchased a Cthulhu at Ikea before, but I guess there's a first time for everything. Let's see. You recapture log everything the way you want it to appear in the tree and head downstairs. You figure that's enough dilly-dallying. Time to get a move on. Alright, there's sound to this next one. Alright, let's get a move on. You wonder if this rain will ever let up. It's driven, si it's driven since the month began, perhaps long enough to forget its purpose. It no longer even knows to assuage fire. Somewhere, a zealous god threads these strings between the clouds and the earth, preparing for a symphony it fears impossible to play. And so it threads on and on, delaying the rays of the conductor's baton. How you hate this season. Before I scroll down, we're going to watch the rest of this. <laughs> nice, Harper. So, Rose seems to be a goth. <laughs> Maybe slightly. But, like, I just like I like the, ro the way Rose speaks and writes. It's just so delightful and charming to me. All right. April is the cruelest month, breeding lilacs out of the dead land, mixing memory and desire, stirring dull roots with spring rain. American sports legend Charles Barkley. <laughs> Did Charles Barkley actually say that? I'll have to look that up later. That doesn't sound at all like Charles Barkley. <laughs> Confront mother in hall. Surely your mother is lurking nearby. You should be prepared for an unpleasant conference. Oh, psych! What? Wait, what just happened? Oh my gosh, is this... Is this rapper dude? What? <laughs> There's this really cool dude, okay? He's standing around being all chill. Like, cool like cool dudes are known to do sometimes. A cool dude like this probably has a real cool name. But he probably wouldn't just tell you what it was if you asked. He'd be way too busy for that. Busy being totally sweet. 
<laughs> but you could always try to guess his name, and if you were right, he might nod ever so slightly. That's a cool dude's way of letting you know there might just be hope for you yet. Enter name. What kind of name will we make up this time? Insufferable pri- <laughs> This guy doesn't have time for this sort of bullshit. Try again. Oh my god, he has a sword. That is awesome. <laughs> oh, did you, co did you cosplay as this guy, Blitzy? That's amazing. Alright, try again. Dave Strider. That's kind of a cool name. <laughs> my name is Dave Strider. I mean, Strider is very Lord of the Rings, so... Oh, um... Let's get the music back on. There we go. Your name is Dave. It is an unreasonably warm April day. You're better... My gosh, his room is a mess. Actually, it looks like... Well, actually, on closer look, it just has, like, a lot of stuff. But there's a lot of clutter. Let's see. Da, da, da. Your bedroom window is open to let some air in, and your fan is cranked. Arguably even more cranked. Arguably even more cranked would be your fly beats, which brings us to your variety of interests. A cool dude like you is sure to have plenty. You have a penchant for spinning out unbelievably ill jams with your turntables and mixing gear. You like to rave about bands no one's ever heard of, but you. You collect weird dead things preserved in various ways. You are an amateur photographer and operate your own makeshift darkroom. You maintain a number of ironically humorous blogs, websites, and social networking profiles. And if the inspiration strikes, you won't hesitate to drop some fat rhymes on a mofo and represent. What will you do? I think what we will do 